One of my favorite pieces of software that I've been using to run my business has been Zoom's a video conferencing software. We use it for meeting with new clients and existing clients as well as our internal meetings. And in this video, I'm going to show you how to get started with Zoom. So the first thing you want to do is go over to zoom.us and in the top menu bar here, there's a blue button saying sign up, it's free. Click that and then type in your email address and click the sign up button below. This will send you an email to confirm your address. And if you just click the button in the email, you'll be authenticated. Once you have received your email, and click to the activation link, you'll be sent over to a page where you fill out your name and your password. Once you're fully signed up, you'll be taken to the browser version of Zoom. And the first thing you may want to do is go to resources in the top menu there and click download client. This will download the Zoom software onto your computer. You have a Zoom for meetings, you've got Zoom for Microsoft Outlook. You've got browser extensions. There's a number of ways of using Zoom. You can even use it on your mobile phone. But I suggest from the, for this demo, we'll just go with a download client for meetings. And so download that and follow the, the links to install it to your computer. Before we jump into how to use the client version of this, I'll carry on with the browser version. As you can see on the menu at the top here, it's the second menu down, the white background menu. Click Schedule Meeting. You can type your meeting name in and a little description. Choose when the meeting is going to happen. And now on the free account, you get unlimited one-to-one -one meetings for an unlimited amount of time. But if you need three or more participants in your meetings, then they are limited to 40 minutes. You can get rid of that limit by paying for the premium version but the free version is limited. If the meeting is recurring, you scroll down and you'll see recurring meetings. Tick that and you can choose how often, daily, weekly, monthly. And so you can set up all your meetings at once. If you scroll down further, you can also set passwords for your meetings or you can turn the password off. Uh, if you know it's going to be a regular meeting, it may be easier to go without a password, but it is an extra level of security. You can also choose who has their videos on. So if you want to limit how much bandwidth is being passed around, you can have the host video on, participants video off, or you can set them all to on. And usually you have both the computer version of connecting and the telephone version. If you scroll to the bottom of your schedule page here, you'll see some extremely useful tick boxes here. Now, one that I suggest using if you're going to have public meetings, so they're not just internal, is enable waiting room. That will mean that when people click the link to join your meeting, they will be sent to a screen where they can't see the meeting immediately. And when you're ready, you bring them in. That helps you if you are using the same link for multiple people because you can set it to a permanent link or you can uh, generate a link each time. If it's a permanent link, say your company name, then you don't want the next guest coming early and joining your current meeting. So you can set them into a waiting room. Another useful feature is mute participants on entry. Now Zoom prioritizes audios. So if say I'm talking in a meeting and someone else speaks, it may switch over to them. You'll be able to hear and see them. You may not want this, particularly if you're doing a presentation. So you can mute people's microphones on entry and have only the host's audio showing and therefore only the video showing with it. And you can also record your meetings. Now I believe Zoom offers cloud recording uh, for their premium packages, but you can record on your computer as part of the free package. You can click save and that meeting is set up and you can easily add it to your calendar. You can, you've got your Google, your Outlook or your Yahoo there. You can also scroll down here and you'll see copy the invitation. If you click on that, all of this text gets copied over. So that includes the link for people to join your meeting 
and the password. If you've got a password set, it will send them the password. That's very important. If you just send them the link, they won't be able to get in. So just simply click copy meeting invitation. It's copied to your clipboard and you can email that to people directly. You can also, if you are planning to have the same setup repeatedly, you can click it as save as a meeting template. So you don't have to go through this process every time. You can automatically uh, set up new meetings from a template. In order to join a meeting, you generally can just click the link that you're sent. And if you've got the client, it will open up and join the meeting. But if you're having trouble with that, click the join a meeting in the top menu, paste the meetings uh, ID and click join and your client will open up your software client and you'll be able to join the meeting. Or if you want to host a meeting right away, you're not scheduling it. Top menu again, host a meeting with video off, video on or share screen only. So that's how to use the browser version. When you launch the software on your computer, as you can see, here's my meeting. This is the meeting I booked using the browser earlier and it's all scheduled in for me and I can press start when I'm ready. Or I don't need to go into the browser. I can click new meeting here and we would be taken through in the same way as we were in the browser. I can schedule a meeting and as you see, it brings up all the scheduling uh, information that I went through earlier. You can click on advanced options down the bottom and here's the meeting participants and the waiting room. You can choose all that and schedule it there. You can also join a meeting from here. Again, just fill in the ID. You'll have your name. Choose whether you want your video and audio on and you're ready to go. Just click join. So what I've done here is start a meeting. It's just me in the meeting. So you'll only see my camera. If other people are in the meeting, you could potentially see theirs also. If I want to use any of the features, what I need to do now is scroll over the camera with my mouse and you'll see the menu pop up at the bottom. Here you can mute the microphone or stop the video at the bottom left there. If you want to change which microphone you're using or which camera you're using, click the arrow next to the corresponding button and a list will come up and you can choose from there. If you've forgotten to invite anyone when you set up the meeting, you can invite them from here. Click the invite button. If they were in your contact list, you would be able to choose them from there. If not, you click email. And if you have a email client like Outlook, for example, or mail installed on your computer, click default email and that would be brought up for you or you can connect your Gmail and Yahoo mail. Alternatively, if you haven't got this set up, say you're using a personal web mail login, down the bottom here you can see copy invitation. Once again, if you copy that, you'll get the full email plus the password. That'll be copied over and you can e email that out how you see fit. If you are hosting a meeting, then you may want to click this manage participants and you'll be shown a list of all the people in your meeting. I've only got one, but you can have up to 100 people here and you can mute their microphones individually. You can rename them. I believe you should turn their camera off. You add a profile picture. Any controls on an individual level you can do when you scroll over their name. But if I'm in a meeting and there's lots of chatter going on and actually I just need some attention, maybe I'll click mute all. You can mute everyone in the meeting. This is particularly useful if someone's joined the meeting and they've left their microphone on. You can also unmute all. So if, if you've done a presentation and now it's time for people to speak, you can unmute them all or click more here. Now, if, if you are holding a meeting and people are coming in with their microphones on and you don't want them to, click more, and then you've got mute participants on entry. And you, you can stop 
participants unmuting themselves. And there you go. Anyone that joins this meeting now will be muted. So that's useful for webinars and presentations, maybe some teaching. If you are doing webinars and uh, teaching and you want people to be able to communicate, but you don't want them on audio, then again, scroll over your face, click the chat button, and this chat window will open up. And in here, people can talk away. Or if you don't want them talking, click the three dots and choose the settings for the chat. So you can have no one host only, have it as public, your choice. This is useful again if you want to share files. I click this little square file button and it will bring up Dropbox, Google Drive, OneDrive, Box, and your computer. And you can upload files and share them with everyone directly in chat. A very useful feature that most video conferencing software will have is screen sharing. Now, if you scroll over your face, there'll be a green button at the bottom saying share screen. If I click that, I can choose which screen to share with you, but I can also choose whiteboard. We'll open up the whiteboard. And here I can draw, erase that scribble. I can use the text tool to type and I can choose little, say if I wanted to point out a particular thing on the screen that I'm talking about, you say the arrow, there that's all on this top menu and again you can erase it all as you go i want to stop sharing at the top of this, my screen there is a stop sharing button another way of sharing is i haven't got this set up myself but you can actually share your iphone and ipad if you're using mirroring on your phone you need to be on the same wi-fi as your computer by clicking advance, I can just share a portion of my screen. I can share a second camera if I had another camera plugged in here, or I can choose a file. If something important is happening in your meeting and you need to make sure it's recorded, there is a record button at the bottom. Just click that. It will start recording both the video and the audio. You'll get them as a a singular file as well as the audio separately. And once it's recorded what you need, up here at the top of your video screen, there is a pause or a stop button. Click stop and that will save to your computer. This is particularly useful, say, if you need to record a podcast virtually or a, a chat video, an interview, say you want to record it virtually, you can do that and get the files at the end on your computer locally. And now a bit of a fun feature to finish this off with is reactions. You can give claps or you can give thumbs up by just clicking the reaction button at the bottom. Of course, once your meeting is done, the final thing you'll need to know is how to end the meeting. Just down the bottom of your screen is an end meeting button. And what's important here is to remember that if the meeting is going on without you, you can leave the meeting or if you want to carry on uh, and you want everyone else to finish the meeting with you, you can press end all. I click that. It's finished. And as you can see at the end, that's where the audio gets saved. So do keep your computers going. Don't suddenly click off of it. You'll see there's the video recording and the audio recording. So that's my walkthrough of Zoom's video conferencing software. If you found this video helpful, then press that like button. If you've got any questions, then leave a comment below or reach out to me on Twitter at Joel Buckland. And if you want more videos on branding, marketing, and digital transformation, then subscribe to my YouTube channel. See you next time.